Well, hello, YouTube, and welcome back to Field Trips. This is kind of a bonus episode, so sorry in advance. There's no fishing in this one. If you saw last week, we wore out the redfish here in San Luis Pass on the Texas coast. And in this little bonus episode, we're going to show you some tricks for cleaning redfish. It's going to make your life easier, and most of these tricks apply to any fish. Look at that bloodline, bro. I'll tell you. So Rex just told us a pretty cool trick. This is something that any fisherman should know, especially for redfish. I, I'm not actually sure how many species this works for, but it's definitely gonna work for all drum species. But if you ever want to dispatch a fish quickly, so end a fish's life, a fish that you know that you're gonna keep, you don't want it to suffer, you want the meat to stay fresh, there's a trick that Rex just taught us that he learned from someone else. What you gotta do you, is just- You can see this bloodline. Stick your thumb, thumb right in that armpit right there. You basically just thumb them behind the pectoral fin. So if you see under here, there's almost like this kind of natural gap. I mean, there's Perfect little slot. there's there's a hole that's already there. And if you shove your thumb in there and you have to do it hard, I mean, look at that. You see the depth? Basically, that leads to their heart. And so you jam that in there and I can feel that fish's heart. And when you come out, it's gonna start bleeding. Basically, that will kill the fish essentially instantly it will also make them bleed. So it's gonna make meat nice and clean. And that's a great way to dispatch your fish without using a knife or, or, or getting yeah, too crazy with it. All the... The great point Rex just made, uh, even more importantly today, I was looking at a redfish, thought I had him in my sights, and then one of the redfish on my stringer thrashed, made a clunky noise against the boat, and the fish spooked. And so if for no other reason, I'm all about keeping meat fresh, but dispatch your fish so they don't mess up your next potential catch because they, they messed mine up today. We got fish, we're not gonna starve, so let's get to work. All right, so we got five redfish, all between 20 and 22 inches, kind of lower slot redfish, and then one speckle trout that was barely legal. So we don't feel like, and by we, I mean I don't feel like cleaning these completely tonight, so we're just gonna take them down right here on the dock and we're gonna gut them. So typically parasites like worms are gonna live in the gut and when the fish dies, these worms sense that and they start burrowing out of the gut and they end up in your meat and they won't hurt you. And my dad would say that's just extra protein, but uh, for those of you that don't like eating worms, it's pretty critical in my mind to gut your fish the day you catch them. So we're gonna go gut them and then we'll kind of deal with them later. After that, we'll put them on ice and, and they should be fine for, at that point, a few days. But you really wanna gut them pretty much right away. So we got the Gerber flay knife. First, we'll just kind of pull all these fish off of this, uh, these stringers. All right, and so to gut these fish, super simple, really with any fish. I'll start here in the, the anus, if you will. I believe that's how the French call it. We're basically meeting here to the collar. We want to save the collar, so we're not going to mess that up. And you don't want to pierce too deep. You want to kind of use the blade, and if, whenever you can, be slicing upwards like this, so we're not puncturing the gut, and that's going to make it smell real nasty and you'll hit the ribs right around here, right between their pectoral fins, and that's kind of the stopping point. And uh, very simple, we'll just reach into here. This is kind of the, the vital organs in the cavities. So there's uh, the intestines. We're just basically rip them out. We're gonna throw them back in the marsh, return all those nutrients to the marsh. The crabs will eat these. There's the liver right there. The crabs will eat these. The redfish of next generations will eat the crabs and uh, you know, little Simba Mufasa circle of life going on. Just like the Lion King, but this is kind of gnarly. You kind of just dig in there with your hands and, and just rip it out. Is this how you do it, bro? How do you get a fish? I just rip the gills out and all the guts come with it. Really? Yep. You cut up here? So I cut it right here. Yeah. Like there, and like cut the head off. Well, just 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 separate that from the the head part. A lot of the best meat is in the head. The collars are a prized piece that often gets thrown away. That's basically kind of the throat. They're delicious. They're like chicken wings. Rex Del Rey showed me that uh, years ago, and now I eat them all the time. And redfish collars are one of the best parts of meat that routinely gets thrown away. So Rex Del Rey here just taught me a trick. He says that basically I can separate this redfish is the, the kind of there's a little thin part where the gills meet sort of the bottom of the mouth he says you can slice through that and then carve around the gills and basically by ripping the gills out of this fish i can pull all of the guts out in kind of one flick of the wrist i mean it's not that simple but 
Watch this. We're about to try it. It's my first time trying this. So if this works, this is a, I've never heard of this trick. And if this works, I'm doing it for my first time. So that means that anyone can do it. So let, let's see if this happens. So first, just basically disconnecting this. Yeah? Yep. Which it's a pretty tough piece of skin, but he says cut through that. So now we just separated that. You see that? So the jaw and the gills are now separate. And now he's saying to carve along and basically cut the gills free of the actual meat. And this is the collar part that I'm talking about most people waste. When you fillet a fish, you inevitably end up throwing this away. And uh, it's just such a waste. It's such a delicious part of fish. So we're gonna cut the gills out from that side. And then we'll do the same. On this side, we're just following the, the skin, following the geometry of the fish. It's very simple. There is no guesswork. You just follow the fish. And now you can very easily see that the gills have been cut away from the flesh of the fish. And now what Rex is saying is that you can basically pull all the guts out in one motion. And now this wasn't perfect, but for my first try, there's the liver. Oof. There's some of the intestines. There's a fish inside of that right there. It's a lot just came out in one pull and without even having to gut open the belly of the fish I mean actually this is pretty empty dude yeah, you got it all I think that's everything you can check it you can open it up you so that is a new trick that I've never seen and uh, that actually I mean for my first try that worked perfectly I think so we're gonna cut the, open the stomach now and kind of verify see if I actually did get all the guts in in one motion and again, when you're cutting into the belly, just go through the anus. It's kind of the logical uh, intersection point. Let's see what uh, what all I missed. I think I missed a little bit of uh, the intestines, but really not much. And I, again, I think that with maybe a little practice and a little technique, I mean, look what I missed. That's that's pretty nominal. Like I think if you left that in the fish, you're not gonna have to worry about worms. I don't think that that's really a uh, significant part of, of the guts to get out other than that it's uh it's clean it's ready to go that's the way to do it man yep. that's cool that's cool my aunt taught me that your aunt taught you that yep. but with the guts being out of there it should last a couple days a few days no problem and that'll give you time to figure out how you want to cook it up or serve it up to your friends have them over whatever i tell people this all the time in person but like Americans just think that like, if you didn't fillet the fish, you're being lazy. But the rest of the world, with the exception really of England and Australia, and if you think about that, England colonized Australia and the US, and so it's basically our cultures, the English cultures and, and their derivatives. We fillet fish and it's almost like if you didn't fillet the fish, you, you're just like taking, you're just not doing what you should be doing. The rest of the world does not fillet fish. They gut them, they fry them whole, they, they chop it up, make it into a stew. I mean, there's nobody wastes fish like the British, the Australians, and the Americans. We're the only ones that do that. And since I've quit doing that, and really you, meeting you, Rex, like had a big impact on what I looked at a fish carcass and what I thought I could get from it. But it has changed my life and my, my whole pers perspective. And when I look at a fish, I just... I just see it differently now. Like there's just so much to harvest and enjoy off of it. And I see so many people wasting a lot of the fish. And it's just like, you get to a point where I just, I've become like a snob now where like, if you're just throwing away, if you're throwing away the head of a redfish, like I don't want to be your friend, like, or you just haven't been educated. But if you disagree, like there's so much good meat in this part of it. And especially this part of it too, the, the collar uh, with these fins attached that just nobody nobody uses and once you start to understand the anatomy of fish You can really figure out the best way to to harvest all the all, all the good good nuggets of meat out of it The more I learn about the resource the more I respect the resource and just the more I enjoy uh, Harvesting the resource and sharing it with others. So We'll get these guys up tomorrow. And it should be delicious We got more work to do yet. Yeah. My aunt did it, you know with other fish and I should, I, I, I put two and two together. I was like, oh, that's just a universal trick. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, so when you're uh, cleaning out your redfish in the natural marsh water that they just live in, 
make sure you hang on to them because apparently if you let go, they're still capable of swimming at least eight feet because somehow I lost the last one. Rob thing. just lost a dead fish. Uh, I don't think you could release them after all that, after all you did to them. I used the gutted and gill trick and this fish got away from me, which is, I did not see this coming. Basically Rob dropped the fish and somehow it didn't fall straight down. Feel him? No. You're kind of committed to this now. <laughs> you gotta do whatever it takes, bro. I mean, if not, I'm just feeding the crabs. It's just annoying. We caught these fish. How did I lose this fish? And you were just all talking, talking all this noise about wasting fish. You gotta catch them now. You don't want oysters for dinner? Where's it at? I dropped it right here, man. I don't know oh, where he's at. This is how you get wait, tetanus. Wait, 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 wait. You just gotta guilt them enough. Oh, it's so much colder than I thought it was gonna be. I think he's just under the dog. Mm. There's no water movement. It should just be right, right there. Ow. Can you find him? Ow. There's oysters, man. <laughs> There's frogs, too. Barking spiders. This just feels absurd that, like, this fish with no gills and no guts just like escaped me. That feels just un impossible. And I just like, who knows what's under this dock, man? Broken Red hooks, road. wrists, yeah. I'm just waiting to step on a ru uh, rusty trouble. I'm way up under there. I just feel oysters and I have to be careful because they're sharp. I'm never- Oh, it's freezing, holy cow. <laughs> yeah, I mean Man, if he's deeper than that, I don't want to go. I'm right at the uh, genitalia level, and I'm pretty much good <laughs> right there. You know what I'm saying? It's so cold in my butthole. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'm out on that. I'm out on that. Yeah. Wow, a wasted redfish. <sighs> it's not wasted. The crabs and the black drum and the shrimp but he could will all having... feast on this guy. What? Well, get in there then. I don't want to hear from you. I've tried. I've tried, man. I've tried. Sometimes you can pour one out for the homies. You just gotta give one back to the marsh. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> hey, you got some lip grips for these dead redfish? Cause they're slippery. These so gone. And now I'm the joke of camp. It's no big deal. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not something. Not bitter about it. It's no big deal. I'm just like doing all this work. There we go. Just grab it like that, and then not even a twitch. Just yeah, just like a freaking caveman. Look like at a that. savage. All the guts, See, everything the liver, out. everything That's comes it. out attached to the gills. Learning tricks, y'all. That's the best part about traveling and fishing with different people. Learn all kinds of tricks. Everyone's got tricks. All these nutrients go right back in the marsh and we take the parts that are edible for us and everybody wins. Except for the redfish. All right, well I hope you found that tip as useful as I did. My good buddy Rex, he's just full of really useful tips. For cleaning and cooking up fish check out his youtube channel there's a link down in the description i know this wasn't a fishing episode so sorry for that but don't worry there's another one coming up very soon where rex and the moore family and i are going to be heading back out in the san luis pass into the marsh and getting on some redfish i will see you next week